Here we are logged into Clean Proposals and I've got a sample prospect up here that I want to go over with you. And we're going to start off with number one, which is figuring out your clean times, right? Because that's one of the more difficult aspects of cleaning is how long is it going to take me to clean? And once you get that, that kind of unlocks all of the other things that you need to be successful in your bidding process. So we're going to go here to the automated price estimator. And I've already got office space filled out. I'm gonna put in cleanable square footage and I've got five days a week. So your, your cleaning times are going to vary based upon all of these inputs here. And I'll show you that in just a moment. So <clears throat> down here you have medium, difficult or easy. So this will match your expectations or your client's expectations. And then you can slide this dial up here or down here to figure out how much hard flooring that you're going to have in this particular building. And then we're going to click next and we're going to always say that we have employees because if you're someone who doesn't have employees, you still want to bid as if you do have employees because one day you want to have employees so that you're not doing the work yourself. And if you want to actually get jobs that will pay for employees, you got to bid that way. All right. So we've got a rate of pay in here. And then we have payroll tax. This is going to include uh, federal, state, any type of local tax, as well as your general liability. All of this is changeable. So you can change your payroll tax, your supplies. If you want to do that, you can change your overhead. And then you're, here you're going to have a profit margin that you can slide up or down. Okay. And what I really want you to pay attention to is your cleaning times and how this is going to change based upon those inputs that we put in step one. So what I like to do is I use this calculator, not for my final price, even though this will work, this is for those people who don't have any experience and don't want to weigh over bid, don't want to weigh under bid. This number will work for you, your monthly price. You'll notice that the calculator gives you your monthly profit, your cleaning time, your price per service, and your monthly price to your client, and it automatically feeds into the proposal. If we click on compensation, you'll see that here. And I wanna go back and show you how this cleaning time, which is the key that we're going to use to unlock the rest of this into step one, or option one, excuse me, is look at the varies, variables that will change this. So if we go back to the first part here, if we slide it up to, let's look at that to clean time again, it's three hours and 36 minutes. If we slide this to difficult and go back here, you'll see how that went up from three hours and 36 minutes to four hours. That's a variable that's gonna change your cleaning time or your production rate. Let's go back to medium here and see that it's three hours and 36 minutes. Also the flooring type. So if it's more carpet, it's easier to clean, right? So you'll see how it went from three hours and 36 minutes to three hours and one minute. Those are all powerful features to have. And then also something to consider. So we'll do medium and 50, 50. We've got three hours and 22 minutes is the frequency. So, if you're only cleaning one time a week, it's going to be more difficult each time that you go in and clean that building. So that, that rate is going to go up. So it went to three hours and 58 minutes. Those are all the variables that are going to be considered for your production rate and clean times. And this is a really powerful feature because we're guessing often how long it takes to clean. Now this bidding calculator is an estimating tool. We can't guarantee that we have every single uh, contingency covered, but this is going to give you a good starting point that I'll show you how to go into more detail in option one here. But something else to consider is we'll give you different production rates based upon the building type. So let's go back here to three days a week and let's look at the frequency or excuse me, the, the cleaning time here. So we have three hours and 45 minutes. Now, if we're going to go back up here and, and change the type of facility, because that makes a difference too. So if you go to medical dental, that cleaning time is going to be higher because the demands are higher. You see how that's five hours and 25 minutes. Whereas with office space, 
it's three hours and 45 minutes. And the calculator will also then change again with these variables. Okay, so uh, the square footage, medium of difficult, and then the flooring type, percentage of flooring type. So that's important to know. Also, let's go to childcare because that is a little bit more difficult. And we'll go back here. And now it's at four hours and eight minutes. So childcare, medical dental, and restaurants are gonna have different production rates. So let's go here. Let's look at this childcare rate again. And the cleanable square footage is the same for all of these, but the needs are different, right? Been depending on the facility type. So four hours and eight minutes. And now let's go to restaurant. That should shoot up quite a bit there. And let's go here. And now we're at nine hours and 22 minutes. So there's a lot of power in the automated price estimator. But again, I want you to focus on your clean times because that's what we're gonna use to go over here and get a more detailed bid. But that's a lot of power that you have in this bidding tool. And the same thing uh, happens in residential. There's a bunch of variable inputs that will give you a different production rate. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the do-it-yourself calculator and we're gonna focus on steps. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head on over to the do-it-yourself advanced cost estimator. And I want you to keep this number in mind here, the three hours and 45 minutes. Let's go over here to this option number one. And you're gonna have nine different expense types that should be in every single proposal, okay? So we're gonna start here and show you the first three. Click this little gear icon. And you're gonna have payroll tax, insurance, and overhead. Now I just plugged in some arbitrary numbers here. You would have to plug in obviously yours, but these are the first three that you need in here. Now some of you may be saying, well, I don't even have employees. Why do I need to enter payroll tax? I'm always going to say this. If you don't have an employee, I don't want you doing the work. I want you to be able to scale your business and get employees. So never bid like the company you are. Bid like the company you want to be. And the company you want to be is going to have adequate labor rates um, and clean times so that you can have other people doing the work and you can scale your business. So these are the first three that need to be in every single proposal. Number four is going to be obviously your frontline custodians or your staff here. So we're going to enter, let's say one person and we're paying them $18 an hour. And this is, is an obvious one. So what was the right here? Okay. So three hours and 45 minutes. I'm just going to estimate up a little bit here and go four hours. And we're going to say three days a week. So this is expense type four, which is your frontline staff of people who are going to be doing the work. So the software is going to give you your labor cost per clean. So, you know, every time that employee goes to work for four hours, it's going to be $92 and 34 cents out of your pocket there. Here's your annual labor rate. And here is your monthly labor rate for this. Now, expense number five is going to be a trainer. Okay. So we click here. We're going to say one person, let's say they're making $25 an hour. And what I mean by trainers is you're going to have to have people in your organization that train your employees when you have turnover and turnover is an unfortunate um, thing in this industry. And sometimes it can be quite high and that is a direct expense to the building that you're bidding on, right? You are going to have turnover in that location and that labor needs to be accounted for in that building. So the way we did it at our company, over the past 25 years is that we trained three days. The first day they watched us. The second day, the employee, uh, we watched the employee. And the third day, we cut them loose and just checked on, uh, on, checked on them at the end of the shift to make sure that, you know, the building's secure, lights are off, and the alarm's on. So in this case, if we're doing three days of training at four hours a night, we're going to say 12 hours. And I always account for a minimum of two trainings per year, two, turnover, two turnovers per year. Now, you may be in a situation where you get employees and sometimes they can last for years and you don't have any turnover. Other times it seems like you can't even keep employees and every few weeks they're turning over. 
somehow you need to account for that cost to that location. And so we do a minimum of two a year. And the next thing that we're going to have, which is expense number six, is we are going to have inspectors. So let's say you have one person that's making you know, 20 bucks an hour. And what we do is we have one quality control inspection per month as a minimum. So what I'm showing you are the nine different expense types that you need to scale your business. And these are the bare minimum that need to go in every single proposal. So we inspect what we expect, right? And you don't want to be the quality control inspector as the owner operator all the time. You want to be able to pay somebody to go out and do that. Well, you've got to account for that cost or it's going to come out of your pocket. So here are the six expenses that need to be in there so far. You're going to have your payroll tax, your insurance and, and overhead. You're going to have to have an inspector because you inspect what you expect. You're going to have to have trainer to account for some of your turnover time and professionally training your employees. And then, of course, you have your frontline custodians or your, your people who are in the trenches every day doing the, the daily work. OK, and you want to make sure you have adequate clean time and that you can pay them well. So these are the six things that you need. Now you need three more expenses. And number seven is going to be cleaning supplies, obviously, right? None of this is rocket science. But even our seasoned veterans in the in this cleaning industry, they'll forget some of these expenses or don't account for it. So let's just say you think it's going to be $50 a month in cleaning supplies. You'll add that there. And then what you're going to need is a tech fee. Now, the reason why I include a tech fee as a different expense here is that when I'm explaining to the prospects the structure of our cleaning bid and how we came up with our number, it, one, this looks good. It's a technology fee. And two, you actually do want to account for this cost. So the quality control software that we use charges us an onboarding fee for every new customer that we add. And we, we pass that on to our clients. And also you want to account for things like this software, clean proposal software. You also want to account for maybe bookkeeping software or things like that because you use technology to run your business. So you have to pass on those expenses to your customer. And then lastly, expense number nine is going to be something that a lot of people forget too, is your drive time or fuel, right? And let's say that's going to be $125 a month. That's an expense directly related to driving to this location, whether you're driving there to do your quality control inspection, whether you are an owner operator doing the cleaning, you still have to drive and pay for that. You have to account for that time and expense in this particular proposal. So here are your nine different expenses. And I want you to understand these are the bare minimums, but I have this in every single proposal that I do right because this is scalable if you can't do quality control inspections if you can't pay for your trainers and if you can't have uh you know well-paid custodians with ad adequate clean time you're not going to scale you're not going to be able to grow your company in a way that you really want to grow and then of course unless you're cleaning with air right <laughs> you got to have cleaning supplies and then the technology fee and drive time so there's other things that may be included in here like we have a cell phone reimbursement because we have our employees use their cell phones to log in and to get work orders, et cetera. So you might even wanna to add to this, but this is the, gonna be the bare minimum structure. All right, so now you know the nine different expenses that need to be in every single proposal each time. Let's take a look at number, um, uh, number four here, which is, excuse me, number three, which is going to be your profit margins and cash flow. So let's say you want to work on a 35% profit margin. What you're going to want to do is make sure you establish a profit margin minimum. So as you're scaling your business, you want to look at this and say, I don't want to do business below a certain ratio. So let's say 30% is your bottom line. You don't want to take a contract that's going to be below 30% profit margins because it just doesn't produce enough income for you to scale your business. That's going to be important. And then you're going to also want to look at a cash flow or a revenue minimum. So let me go back up here to 35%. Let's say your minimum is 30%. You want to bid at 35 or 40%. And so that way, if you have to negotiate, 
you can go back down to 30% and leave yourself some room in this proposal. But if you wanted to have 35% here, the software is going to tell you that your cash or your revenue from this particular um, bid is going to be $911.38 excuse me, $911 and your charge to your customer is $2,603.95. But there's a lot more power in this do-it-yourself calculator. What you can also do is let's say you have a cash minimum. Let's say you don't want to take a job that's going to be below $1,000 in your pocket, right? So you can go over here, plug in $1,000. You can tell the software what you want to make on a job and it will reverse engineer those numbers for you. So that way you are going to know what your profit margin is and what your charge to your customer is. But also let's say you have a customer that is just tight on a budget. So that'll take us to our next element that needs to be in your successful bids. Being able to work with clients that have a tight budget. Okay, so that's going to be number four. Let's say you've got a customer that's like, you know what, I really want to work with you, but I don't have a nickel over twenty, you know, $2,400. What the software will allow you to do is go in here and type in the client's budget. Oops. Let's do that. Here we go. Let's say they had $2,400. The software then uh, will then reverse engineer the numbers again and tell you what your profit margin is, tell you what your, excuse me, tell you what your cash flow is. So you'd be making $707.43 and tell you what your profit margin is. So here you can work on your profit margin minimums, you can work on your cash flow minimums, or you can work with a client that has a tight budget. And the beauty about this software is you have all of those options here. And you can also go in here and then start playing with the numbers. So let's say you have a client that has this budget of 2,400 bucks. You can go in and go, well, you know what? I'm not sure if I wanna take that because it, it's below my minimum profit margin of, of 30%. But what if I adjusted this to, let's say, three hours, 45 minutes, 3.75 hours, and I come back down here. Okay, now I am above my minimum profit margin. I can take it if I can do the account in three hours and 45 minutes. So you can go back here, play with all these numbers. The software will reverse engineer everything for you and give you accurate information. And then lastly, this is why you should avoid working by the square footage or bidding by the square footage, which is number five. So if you know the cleanable square footage, let's say it's 12,500, the software is going to tell you what you're charging per square foot. Now, what's the relevancy of 19 cents a square foot to any of this? There, there really isn't, right? <clears throat> so if I were to tell you to charge 19 cents a square foot to bid this building, the only thing that you would know is that that would come out to $2,400. You wouldn't know what your profit margin is, your revenue. You wouldn't know, uh, you know how much you can pay an employee for how many hours per night. You wouldn't know if that included your trainers or your inspectors and your uh, overhead and other expenses. None of that is going to be known if you were just charged by the square foot. But the software is going to give you this information for those of you who would like to know this as a tool or an indicator where you're at. Let's say you're hearing in the industry that the average uh, you know, office cleaning is getting 22 cents a square foot or 25 cents a square foot. This is just an indicator. But costing your your job out is really the way to do this but the software will allow you to have this information at your disposal so let's say you wanted to bid by the square foot if you're curious to know what it would be at 25 cents a square foot you plug that in here the software will then tell you what to charge to your customer and it reverse engineers your numbers again so that you know what your revenue is and your profit margin but now on top of that, you know, 
how many employees you're going to have, what you're paying them, your trainers, your inspectors, all your expenses are going to be accounted for in this number. So that is the power that you get with clean proposals is that you can get go in here and get a, a cleaning time or a production rate uh, based upon a bunch of variables here. It's going to give you different times. And then you can really go and cost your job out, job out. You can include your nine different expenses in all of this. And you can have your profit margin, your revenue, and your price per square foot all in one area with Clean Proposals. So don't forget to sign up for your free trial. Go to cleanproposals.com, click on the free trial button in the upper right-hand corner and get started today.